Once in a while, a piece of gear comes into your workflow and it benefits it. It doesn't just hurt your pocketbook. And I wanna talk about said piece of gear. It's kind of funny, because recently I was actually saying how much I'm over editing adaptive, creative hardware consoles. But Logitech sent this to me and I've been using it in my workflow and I have come to warm up to it. Now, full disclosure, Logitech is paying me for this. This is a sponsored video. But before I would do this, I told them you need to send it to me because if I don't like it, I won't know how to talk about it. I actually don't add a lot of new gear into my workflows. I get stubborn and I just want to focus on the projects and I don't want to have to learn anything new. And that's kind of why I'm reviewing this is there's not much of a learning curve. And I will mention a few things that I, you know, feel it could be improved. But overall, I want to go over the things I like about this and what I think it can benefit a professional working scenario. Scenario? You comment below. Let me know. Let's talk about this. We're talking about the Logitech MX Creative Console. First, let's talk about this mouse. This is their MX Master 3S mouse, specifically designed for the Mac in this case, because I'm just all Mac. I gotta say, I'm throwing out this piece of crap after this. The first thing I wanna compliment Logitech on this is that you can charge this while you use it. There is a USB-C port off the front of this. It is diabolical that Apple makes you charge this while you're not using it. This is not ever gonna be included in my workflow again. A few things I really like about this mouse. First thing, this thing slides. And I've actually knocked it right off the table a few times. I've gotten used to that, but that's not a complaint. It is really easy to move around, it's frictionless. And that's the whole kind of point. I find my hand gets so sore after a day of working on the Apple mouse because I'm kind of having to hover on it. But what's great about the 3S mouse here is that it really does fit my hand. And I've really come to enjoy this. This was not something that I think they even want me reviewing, but I'm gonna review it because I wanna say how much I like this. The infinity scroll on this thing, having a weighted scroll button that I can then easily click and touch and turn to ratchet, being able to just flick this scroll button and watch it spin and actually have that relate to the website moving, is kind of fun. It's great even in editing when I'm trying to scroll through big, big pages. One of my favorite features is this little section on the mouse here. This section includes two buttons and a scroll wheel. And if I pop over to Adobe Premiere here, I have these set to my zoom. I just love that I can quickly zoom in on my timeline with just the press of these two buttons. I'm never really having to go back to my keyboard. You'll see as I talk about my workflow today, I'm really just holding these two things the entire time. So 3S mouse has seven buttons. What you might be wondering is, can I still swipe? And you can, down here where your thumb is, They've added kind of some gesture controls. I can click in on this and it shows all my screens. I can press down on it and then just move the mouse slightly to the side. And in this case, it switches between desktops, which is nice. My complaint is this button takes a lot to press. So at first I've gotten, had to get used to it, but I've gotten used to that and just not been a wuss and pressing down on this to switch between desktops really quickly. This is kind of overall the experience I've been finding with this mouse is that it does just fit into my hand and then I have so many options. I'm kind of just massaging my hand and to make a lot of movements happen in the edit. I'm no longer actually having to do big gestures or touch my keyboard much. Oh, and actually, my favorite thing that you can do with this mouse is anytime you're hovering over a link, if you just click down on this part, the scroll wheel, the scroll wheel is actually a button, I just click down on it, it opens it up in a new tab. So I just wanna open up something in a new tab, boom, new tab, boom, new tab, new, 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 new. Stop it. It's small, but it is nice. It's kind of redundant. I almost don't need the right click anymore because that's pretty much the only thing I'm doing on a web browser. And of course, with all of the buttons on this mouse, I can jump over here to the Logi Options software and I can come in here and customize any of these buttons. I can make these move forward or back, depends the software. Of course, with Adobe, it comes default, but I've added this as the zoom in, zoom out option. I think I added that, maybe that was the default option. No, that used to be undo and redo. I don't make any mistakes, so I don't need to undo anything. What? <laughs> that's, that's a total lie. I make a lot of mistakes, but I have that set to over here on the console. And what's nice is that there is a button on here which you can quickly switch between three different computers. And in this office, you can see I'm on my Mac Studio, I have my iMac over there, and I carry my laptop around everywhere. So I do have them programmed now to all those different computers. It's a quick way that I can jump between consoles, except Adobe only lets you have two computers on your Creative Cloud software. So that's annoying, because then I have to keep signing in and out. Adobe, come on, help us out here. 
You can see in some of this B-roll, I am auditioning for some stock video. This is the excited editor. This is me not sure about my edit. Oh, no, I've found the solution to the film. I know what you're saying. Mark, don't ever act again. Let's talk about the keypad for a sec. This is cool, it has nine buttons, and if I change the software, they automatically adjust based on the software I'm using. Over here in Safari, now I'm jumping back to Premiere, and if I opened up Zoom, you can see it'll automatically bring up controls for Zoom. I don't know who's using this for Zoom. Zoom's pretty easy to use, but I do have all these options for Zoom. So we do a lot of big live events for AOD, maybe you would. Like any sort of new instrument that you add to your software, it takes a little bit of time to learn, and I'm finding I'm learning this a bit more. It's been easier. My expectations when they sent me this is that I use it for a day and just get so frustrated with it. But having the screen on this and having just a few buttons over on the shuttle, which I'll get to in just a sec, has made this very simple and has made it easier for me to want to actually integrate it into my editing. And I'm finding when I'm on my laptop, I'm kind of wishing I had my scroll wheel or my zoom buttons. And what's cool too is you can add up to 15 pages. I only have two right now but you can add up to 15 pages with just the press of these buttons here. You can scroll between them. One of my favorite things about this is that it is an LCD screen, that I can see the actual buttons. It takes away the guessing. In some past consoles I've used, when you do have those features and you do have those buttons there, you're wondering, what am I actually pressing? With the keypad too, you can fully customize anything for emojis. I've added Mr. Michael Scott for my emojis. That's what she said. <laughs> also, I am supposed to mention, and this is what I'm doing now, mentioning to you that there is three free months to Adobe Creative Cloud with your Logitech MX Creative Console purchase. That's pretty nice. Setting up the controllers is super easy. I had this all set up in about 10 minutes from unboxing to plugging them in. Just quick things like you can set up the speed of the dial and the roller, but the beauty comes in with the customization. On this case with my, what's this called? What do they call this thing? The dial pad. Dial pad, I, I mostly, I, you know, Zoom's great, but I <laughs> promise you I'm not using this for Zoom. I'm gonna use it for Adobe Premiere. And all I did was thought about what am I using the most when I'm editing, and that's play, add edit, and ripple delete. And that's the beauty of this. I can be, I'm gonna unlock all the tracks here. I'm just playing through here watching this. I can rewind here with my shuttle really quickly. Add an edit, press play and say, uh, I wanna cut right there. And then on my thumb here, boom, ripple delete. It's actually allowed me to edit a lot faster. I know a lot of pros out there are like, oh, you just gotta use the keyboard. But what I'm finding is I'm actually just holding my hand on these two consoles once in a while pressing the keypad here and it's truly speeding up my workflow. No longer ever having to take my hand off the mouse to do a shift or any other keypad strokes here. I'm just entirely using these two. And with the conjunction of being able to scroll my timeline, shuttle frame by frame and quickly add edits and ripple delete, I'm able to kind of edit at the pace that I'm watching the video, which is where you wanna to get to with editing. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Mark, I could just use my keyboard. And you're absolutely right. You can program anything to any of these keys here. I have the JKL and K being my edit and space bar being my play. But there's an extra layer to this shuttle wheel that I haven't mentioned that gives a little bit of genius and is a reason why I'm gonna be keeping this in my workflow. And that is not just because of the shuttle wheel here or having the ability to zoom in with this scroll dial, but it's this button right here where I can quickly press this and this brings up this HUD, action ring. They call it an action ring. That's actually a cool name. This action ring appears wherever your mouse is. And what I can quickly do on this clip here, let me just zoom in here on the timeline so I'm working on this edit. I can press this action ring and I can set anything to this action ring, but in this case I have the default, which is the Lumetri sliders. If you leave it here, you can see this is my tint, it's my temperature, it's my black. So as I keep my mouse highlighted over this and I use the dial, I can begin to subtly or drastically, in this case, change the exposure. Now you can see I can do it in real incremental steps here. What's great about this is rather than coming into Lumetri and pulling down all these, I can quickly just move around and change the tint, change my temperature, this tint is wild. Let's bring that back, then we'll boost our shadows. Oh, I don't have shadows. Let's just quickly change that then. Boom, customize buttons, let's go in here, let's do show action ring, here we go. Here's the action ring I wanna change to shadows. Boom, just like that, there's shadows. And I could change the icon logo if I wanted to, but I'm happy for it to say shadows. Let's get back into Adobe Premiere here. 
Now we're back to the action ring. There's shadows. There we go. Having the action ring and this mouse with seven buttons and my zoom ins and then my three main buttons here means I'm really just editing, holding these two things. I find myself over the course of this week working with this, interacting with my keyboard less and less. So final thoughts, if you don't have any control surface in your workflow, this might be the one to start with. The thing I can highly recommend is consider this mouse. This is the same price as the Apple mouse and the Apple mouse isn't doing much. Yes, it has gesture controls, but so does the Logitech. But this mouse has so much more to it with its infinity scroll and the seven buttons and having this dial wheel here. To me, this is its own control hub for Premiere Pro or any software that you're using. And of course, the Creative Console over here is an addition that I am gonna be introducing to my workflow. I don't love a ton of features when it comes to these. I, I find that this is so simple, it's easy to dive in. And then of course, you can add layers of complexity with the 15 pages or anything else that you wanna customize over here on the actual shuttle. But I've just kept it super simple. Play, blade, ripple delete. That's kind of all you need to do. Bravo on this Logitech, I'm a big fan. Let me know any questions that you have below. The whole setup for this kind of took me maybe about 10 minutes between unboxing and just opening it up in the software. Logitech has made that super easy. There's no extra plugins. Premiere recognizes this by default. You just gotta go into your preferences and add the Logitech as a control surface. But yeah, there you go. Tech reviews with Mark. You don't get me talking about gear much on this channel, but this is a piece of gear that I actually enjoy for my workflow. Thank you guys for watching.